2014 proved to be another busy year for the Irish housing market, particularly in Dublin and the major urban centres of Cork, Limerick and Galway. We spoke to the experts at Savills about what's in store for the market in 2015 and explored key trends such as who's looking to buy and where, the prominence of investors and the emergence of the international buyer, housing supply issues and what effect the central bank mortgage lending restrictions will have on the market. Ireland's economy performed really well in 2014. It looks almost certain now that we're going to have GDP growth of around 5%, which would have been at the upper end of economists' expectations at the beginning of last year. So there's good momentum coming into 2015, and then when you take into account the effects of quantitative easing, I think we're going to have another strong year of growth. Quantitative easing I believe is going to be a game changer for Ireland in particular. It will encourage investors up the risk curve. Investors will have to um, go in search of a higher return and this will mean that there will be less money on deposit and more money flowing into other assets such as equities and of course property. There's a variety of different homes that people are interested in. We've noticed this year there's probably two different sets of first-time buyers. We've got our kind of our mid-20 year olds and then our mid-30 year olds then as well. So the mid-20 year olds are probably looking for something maybe that's more an apartment, city-based, they're probably looking for more convenience to work and a lifestyle choice. Whereas maybe ones that are that little bit older have got more of an eye on, on the future with family in mind. So if they can skip that first rung on the property ladder and get straight into a kind of the family home, so a, a three or a four bedroom, semi-detached home, possibility of something with a, a garage or a good sized garden. For those trading down, we've noticed with a lot of our buyers looking for somewhere close to transport, close to village, but also staying within an area where they have their family network and built up their group of friends, not trying to move outside of that. With the family buyers, again, looking for more space, keeping close to amenities, whether it's the, the transport links, the schools, and indeed work as well. Last year, we had just shy of 15% of our buyers were actually from international buyers or expat community. But with the continuing weakening of the euro, people are finding better value within Dublin than maybe other capital cities like London, for example. There's a lot of people looking for properties to rent. There's a lot of people looking for properties to buy and there are just insufficient numbers of vacant properties available. The inevitable consequence of that is prices rising and rents increasing. We have a very big demand for high-end luxury apartments in, in the core areas like Dublin 2, Dublin 4, and move further out into the, the suburbs, both South Dublin, and looking at the likes of Clontarf and into North Dublin, Malahide, and Sealy areas. There's good demand for three and four bed semis, and we are noticing new trends pushing further out that buyers are possibly priced out of Dublin and they're moving out to the commuter towns such as Maynooth, uh, Bray, in Wicklow, Selbridge, Nace. In relation to the international buyer, we're getting calls on a recent scheme that we launched last week. We are getting calls from as far as Dubai, we're getting calls from Monaco. People are flying in from London in particular because they see value. The, the weakening of the euro against the pound, there is significant value for the UK buyers to come over and buy. The Savills are an international business. We, we link in with our, our counterparts in the Greater London area and further afield. So that's definitely a market that we're tapping into. I mean, one thing that we could look at is the costs of construction. So uh, the VAT on new homes, uh, local authority uh, levies, these are things that could be changed at the stroke of a pen. And if uh, the government could get its act together to do that, I think it would be really beneficial for the market because it would encourage uh, new development to come on stream sooner rather than later. It's very busy in Cork at the moment. I think we have seen a price increase this year just gone of about 12% and it's interesting that Dublin was about 12% the year before. Now t Dublin were 27% this year which I'm sure Cork aren't going to do but I think it's a year for Cork prices to increase. There's definitely a supply issue, I mean demand is way out outstripping supply. Houses haven't been built for the last six or seven years in Cork and also on the second hand side houses are getting sold much quick more quickly now and there's just a lack of stock on that side as well. Prime locations in Cork would be Douglas, Rochestown, Black Rock, Bishopstown, and in fact Kinsale as well has got its own little niche market. A lot of people would have had to move out in, in the boom days, and you find them moving back from the suburbs, back closer to the city for a better quality of life. Family homes in prime areas are, are most in demand, and then you've got first-time buyer demand, and in fact investors have come back into the market again there now as well. 
I think the new uh, central bank mortgage rules are a bit of a game changer because what they will ensure is that particularly in Dublin, uh, a lot of want-to-be first-time buyers are going to find that they can't uh, get onto the housing ladder because they have to save uh, a large deposit. And as a result, you're creating a bigger natural demand for rented property. That will push up rents and in turn that will attract investors and these cash funded investors will flow into the market and they will compete to buy a scarce stock of available properties and that will drive prices up um, either way. So I think the only effect really will be to alter the mix of buyers. You'll have fewer first time buyers and more investors. I think it stands to reason that when you have compounding a very rapid house price growth, it becomes increasingly difficult to sustain that percentage rate of increase because the base is rising all the time. And for that reason alone, we would expect that the rate of growth will slow down somewhat in 2015. And that's no bad thing for the market.